This programme is for entertainment purposes. My heart's racing. Step back, you. Multiple deaths, a curse and a plethora of hauntings await the most haunted team at Aberglasney House. He's got me. Welcome to Most Haunted. It's said that anyone who lives in the shadow of this hill is cursed. This manor house is situated in that very shadow. With unexplained deaths, dark entities and strange noises, we have 24 hours to investigate the hauntings of Aberglasney House in Wales. The history of Aberglasney has never been clear, but according to records, ten generations of Welshmen own the estate before the arrival of Bishop Rudd in the mid-1600s, who rebuilt the house and is responsible for the way it looks today. The property was sold at the start of each new century, and a strange seesaw pattern of wealth alternating with misfortune emerged. Each new family establishes itself with great hopes and ambitions, but after a period of time, the family found itself in difficulties and debt. Eventually, the male heirs died, leaving no male line left, and the house sat empty and silent for many years. The curse of Grongai Hill, which of course is just over here, um, they say that anyone living in the shadow of that hill, and of course this house is in the shadow of the hill, um, will always have bad fortune. Many of the families that lived here either went bankrupt or, of course, in the end, of course, left the place. It's the sort of place that you would expect to find ghosts. There are many, many reported sightings of ghosts here, both by uh, members of the public that visit the place, staff and old staff that used to work here many, many years ago that have come back over a period of time and told their stories. Well, I suppose I... I don't believe in ghosts, but having said that, uh, whenever I walk back at night past the mansion um, in sort of twilight, um, it often goes through my mind, and I actually almost look for them. So it, there's obviously some air of doubt in my mind um, about not believing in them. Uh, there must be something there, I suppose. People have experienced noises of footsteps in this corridor. They've also seen the spirits of two hooded men and the ghost of a little boy. They're renovating the place at the moment. It's made of stone, which is, of course, a good ingredient for, for recordings um, of ghosts. But the other thing, of course, is that many builders and decorators, restoration people, see ghosts because they're disturbing the building. And as they're knocking things around, sometimes people see things or hear things. A little bit like a cassette player dropping on the floor. And the jolt causes that tape to come on again. And people hear something from the past replayed over and over again. Could be some of that in this place. Since restoration work began, the ghost of a little girl and an evil presence have been seen and felt throughout the whole building. Did the builders unwittingly unleash a malevolent spirit? So strong are these feelings that some visitors refuse to enter the house. This place has well over 60,000 visitors a year, but some people pay their money at the gate, get down as far as the door, and for some strange reason, sense an evil presence, and turn away, and go back without ever daring in. My initial thought about visitors you know, saying they don't want to go in the house because they, they have this sort of eerie feeling is that uh, I'm glad I don't have that eerie feeling as well because I quite enjoy going in the house. Um, uh, and having never seen anything, I, I still don't mind going in. But uh, it's, it's quite a common occurrence, visitors coming in saying, I don't want to go any further um, because they feel a sort of cold presence. On a windy night in 1650, five maid servants went to sleep in this very room. In the morning, they'd all mysteriously died. 
Since then, their ghosts are said to wander, and candles have been seen floating on their own in this bedchamber. Could the souls of these poor, unfortunate women still remain here? And what killed them? The chief um, housemaid here at the, at the house, the night before a nasty incident took place, saw five candles burning in the window. And the following night, five maids died in the blue room. The story is that they died of suffocation from fumes, coke fumes from the fire. But there is another story that it's a possibility that they died of arsenic poisoning. So we've got two different stories. I wonder if Derek will add anything to them tonight. and our paranormal investigator had taken time to understand the layout of the building by conducting what is called a baseline test and getting to know the ghost stories at Aberglasney House. Phil, this is an unusual location. Is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to tonight? Well, this is a, this is a great place. It's been derelict for so long and now it's been refurbished, but some of the ghost stories attached to it are amazing. Now, I've heard... Uh, there's supposed to be 90 to 120 ghosts now. I don't believe in that, to be honest with you. And I... That's my personal opinion. Um, but if the reputation lives up to it being 90 to 120 ghosts, good chance of getting something on camera. What about the actual uh, place? It's, it's, it's under refurbishment at the moment, but when it gets dark, we're all OK now, mm. but how do you think everybody's going to react when it's very dark at 3 o'clock in the morning, for instance? I think, to be honest with you, everybody's going to be scared stiff. Now, unless everybody's got torches, it's going to be very dark in here. Now, we all know... When it gets dark, people's imagination starts running wild. They see things out the corner of their eye. They hear things. So that's going to be interesting. We've got to be really quiet, though. Those people that aren't doing vigils have got to be really quiet. This place just echoes all over. The one good thing about that is if we are all quiet and we know where everybody is and we hear things, we can go up and investigate knowing that nobody's around causing that noise. Now, vigils tonight... Mm -hmm. Um, there's one particular interesting one, I think, isn't yep. there? Um, the blue room, I believe you're talking about. Mm. Now, there is only one access to the blue room, and that is by a ladder outside of the building to climb in through the window. If we stick somebody in there tonight and things start happening and they don't like it, there is no easy way out. It's about a 15-foot drop, so that's going to be interesting to see what happens and if anybody gets freaked out by that. What about outside? Well, outside, there are supposed to be a number of sightings, mainly around the cloisters, which is just below me here, and also the new terrace of the cafe that's just been built. Things have been seen there quite recently, so if we send somebody out there with cameras later, yeah, it might be interesting. I've never stayed in the house, and um, I think you'll be the first people to stay in the house for, I know, probably 40, 50 years. Um, uh, you're welcome to it. I expect it's going to be quite cold, and I hope you see something. I can't wait until tomorrow morning uh, to, to hear what you've found or discovered. Whilst we were filming during the day, the house was full of interested visitors and none of us felt scared at all. As soon as night came and the visitors had left, the house and grounds looked ominous and it felt totally different. We asked medium Derek Akora to join the team for the night and hopefully he could find some answers to the mysteries surrounding this beautiful home. With our crew complete, we were ready to begin our investigation. Now, you've brought us outside straight away. Why is that? Yes, because um, my feelings, you know, the psychic feelings initially uh, was drawing me out to the outside more so than the inside. So what are you picking up around here? Well, you know, here's a pathway, Evie. Mm. And, of course, we've got water here. And this pathway, I feel as if it, it's so well... I'm going to use basic words, well-trodden. Mm -hmm. Well-trodden not by just the physical, meaning physical people, but by spirit people. Uh, I'm not talking about one of them either. I'm talking possibly at this point in time, because I do want to go further up to get closer to the energies that I'm being drawn. Yeah, come on. And, you know, I feel here that we've got um, not so much a mixture of residual energy, which I, I often talk about, mm -hmm. you know, in ground in the ground, mm -hmm. of memories of individual walking, but actually individual spirit people. Spirit people at times that are actually walking this pathway and coming up even to this level here and 
a little bit, a, a moment or two ago, I noticed both a man's shape and a woman's shape, and they seem to virtually come together. And I did notice, uh, like, seating in this area here. Yeah. And it took place there. The man moved away from the woman, and as if he was just, like, in the physical body still, still thinking of actually sitting down. Sitting down at one of the tables. Can you see us? Yes. Absolutely. Is he looking now, at us? Yes, he is. And he's not budging. He's not phased by us either. And I feel that this man, OK, um, in his time when he was here in the physical, he would have um, been so, so attached to the outside here. Now, the female that showed herself there was in a very um, dark, if you like, greyish, um, full-length dress and something that was... Um, what do they call that? Piping? Yes. Piping here in the front. And it's as if she stood like that as he walked over to sit down. And she stood there. And the way she was looking at him was as if to say she was proud of him. So I feel she's connected to him. They're both... I feel they must have been in partnership. Mm -hmm. Her energy is um, dispersed a bit, but his energy is staying put. He doesn't, and I don't believe at all, that where the, the main building here is concerned, he would not have had much control there. Right. I also feel as if um, she is. Thank you, Sam. She is the... M uh, they have got a connection with the building. OK. When we go into the building later... Yeah. This lady has got a connection with a little girl that goes on the upper level and she runs across... And she is the mother. Is he the father? He's the father of the little girl. There's also another child in there who's not connected to the little girl. Both are spirit children. But the little girl is linked to this lovely lady. Is there any way of finding out a family Sarah. name? So give me that again, please. It sounded like Ceres. Ceres. Ceres? Is it Ceres? It sounds like Sarah for to the me. Wo for the woman or for the child? For the child. Right. Sarah's. Sarah's, Sarah's, Sarah's. Yes, OK. Thank you. Yes. But not just there. Not just there. Who's talking over there? Did you hear that then? Yes, I did. Did anybody else hear it? I've heard a couple of... Noises it was there. like a murmuring or a man yeah, talking. Yeah, a murmuring over there while yeah. Derek was talking first. Shh, yes. Sh should we see if it comes back? That's a separate bit. Shh, yeah. Shh, shh. It was definitely like a man's... You know something? There's a hooded man. There's a hooded man. He's like, um, the way the hood is shown like this. Should was... we go and see? Yes, please. Let's go down there. That's interesting. He comes, he treads up this pathway. And he's... Has he? He's actually been seen, but he shows himself in the main building and he's just like a dark shadow. But out here, he's hooded, he's been seen. So he, well, let's try and find out, please, why he does this, who he is. Did you see something then or hear anything? What's up? Oh, it must have been an animal because I just heard okay. a cry, but it must have been an animal. Mm. You know, again, we're walking on this energy here and like the, what I was picking up before, the man and the woman, there's a lot more than this. There's even more than the hooded figure. It's like... There's a light down there. Can anybody see a light down there? Where? What am I seeing things? Ooh! Keep still! Yes. Is it static? No, it's moving. I walked down there in the day. I don't remember seeing any lights or anything. Mm -hmm. It could be a torchlight, couldn't it, from somebody else down there? Yeah, but mm -hmm. who me? Should we go down and see? Uh, come with you, Carl. Come on, let's all go. You never know. I just thought it was odd that there's a light there. Oh, God. I hate... Get... Why do we always end up having to walk in woods and things? Well, we've got to check these things out. Yeah, I know we have, yeah. but... It just seems odd to me that there's a light in the middle of what I thought are woods down here. Walking in haunted woods did not seem like a good idea, but we had to find out what that light was, and the only way to do that was to venture further into the darkness. We had all seen a light shining through the trees, and we needed to find out what was causing it. 
As we walked deeper and deeper into the woods, Derek was convinced we were not alone. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This is where that light was. There's something connected here. There's something connected here. In this area. There are people buried here. There are, there's people buried here. Here, where we are, with this light, as we've been drawn here, is to come here. There are bones underneath this ground. Here, on consecrated ground. Oh, the back of my neck. That's something to do with this hooded figure. And back to those trees. Oh. Lives were, were taken and different individuals were brought here, buried under the ground. Did he take the lives? Yes. He was responsible for this because something that was practised, something that was done mm. um, around that um, area. In that, when? When? OK. Something happened around building of something close into these grounds that took place around the 16th century, kicked off stuff that had gone on, this negative stuff, uh, linked with this hooded soul. Say it again. He was not clearly responsible, but he was laughing when the ladies all went into the sleep state and did not wake up. What ladies are those? Five, no. One, two, three, four, five ladies okay. perished. And he didn't wake. He was, he was part responsible for it. But he didn't get his way. He didn't take them away and bury them. He was around watching. Was he in the physical at the time, Sam? Or was he spirit body? No, he was spirit body by then. OK. But he watched. He watched the system of things as they perished. But when we go to the main building, when we go to the main building and we go into the areas that will be unfolded to us. It seemed logical to go into the house and continue our investigation there. This was good news for me, as I was becoming more and more nervous. Oh you all right? Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. They're just, you know, talking about dead bodies under the yeah, ground. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry about that, but just be careful where you're going to do it. Those spirit lights and what have you, would show themselves like that to draw your attention to come into the area. Um, oh. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did, I did, I did. Like the leaves. Did, did, did. That was very, very pronounced. He's playing about with us, this one. I don't like this at all. I think it's because we were in the middle of the night and they're walking around on them, um, where people have been buried. Okay. You see, there's that section. You okay? You all right? It's okay. You all right? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. You all right? Okay. All right, I've got you, Evie. You all right? You okay? All right. You stay calm now. Okay. What's up? All right. What's the matter? What's the matter? They went in my ear. Yes. Okay. They went breathe in my ear. Yeah, okay. I don't like it when they do that. Okay, well, we'll walk out of the area now. <laughs> you're all right, sorry, it's okay. I'm, I'm pathetic, 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 pathetic. I'm no, sorry, I'm sorry, no, I'm no, sorry. No, no, you're not. <laughs> I was so convinced that I'd heard breathing in my ear. It was only until we were editing this programme that we were able to see the terrifying culprit, a moth. This shows how nerves can make you believe almost anything. With our walk in the woods over and time to compose myself, it was back to the house to continue our investigation using our night vision cameras. Derek was certain that the ghost of a hooded figure was lurking somewhere inside. None of us expected to go to the blue room until later. This was the place where the five maids had lost their lives. Well, now we're up here. 
Do you feel anything? Is anything coming to you straight away? Or... Well, what's becoming evident now to me is as we've come and we've been in the atmosphere for a few moments, is I pick up this absolute sadness, and the way I want to describe the sadness is the way I feel it actually took place at a given time here in this room. And what it is, quite innocently, at a certain time, we have a certain amount of ladies knowing each other, involved with each other, going about, I suppose, the, the only way I can describe it, daily toils, and working very hard, wanting to come to rest. And then suddenly, suddenly, for those ladies to realise that they've left the physical body. Now, these ladies found themselves, and I feel very innocently, they left the physical bodies. And this is what I keep on asking, trying to establish precisely how they found themselves leaving their body. And it seems as if there was something in the atmosphere that caused this... The only way I can describe it, because I'm picking up now, I'm being given this around my breathing, picking up some kind of distaste, even to my tongue and what have you here. So I'm taking it that as a copy of what was happening in this atmosphere. And the only way I can describe it, there was a poisoning, but not a conventional poison, meaning, you know, taking a draught a poisoning to the lungs, a poisoning, uh, like the breathing and what have you, they most certainly, as what I can gather here, would not have felt pain. It's like going to sleep and just not physically waking up again. Mm. Oh, gosh. Something was burned. Something was burned. And all along... When these ladies, these maids, the only way I can describe it is like maids, they didn't know that they were, whilst they were resting, that they were being systematically poisoned. They were taking in carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning. That was accidental then. That was accidental because one of them was the cause, accidental, Thank you, Sam. The cause of the deaths of herself and four others. Mm. But something that she'd gathered, I feel it has something to do with a fire. Mm. And not a fire that engulfed them in flames, so to speak. Something had gone into the treatment of whatever fuel that they were burning mm -hmm. that caused these fumes to engulf their sleeping area. Mm. They were not... Their lives were not taken from them by another physical being. They were not murdered. Mm -hmm. They were not. Whilst we continued to investigate the house, Carl the director and Craig, one of our cameramen, had gone off on their own. Earlier in the day, the owner had explained that during restoration work on Aberglasney House, a large percentage of ghostly sightings had taken place in the basement, but we had no idea where the entrance to it was. Craig has just found basement of this building. No one has been down here yet today. Absolutely no one in the crew. We didn't know he was here. Craig's found it and we're going down. Now this apparently is the hub for all the paranormal activity in this place. <laughs> Let's go. All right, I'll see you. This is where the little girl has seen a lot. Yeah. Oh. It's running water. Yeah, it is a little bit scary down here, though. This is amazing. But this is where, when apparently when the refurbishment started, they think they unearthed something. What they unearthed, we don't know. But apparently this is where there's an evil presence in this uh, little bill. That's where we are. It is quite scary, that. Like, I mean, it's just seriously claustrophobic. And there's just... Oh, it's nasty. I mean, that's 
We actually want quite a bit. I mean, it's, it's a bit all right. There's water all over the place. Oh, I'm getting such a, I am getting such a headache in here now. I've got to say, I'm feeling a bit choked. Are you? Mm, just... Oh, my throat. What about... Maybe later on coming down there for a vigil? Yeah. Stick to this edge, it's better. Look, <laughs> brand new. It was imperative that we brought Derek down into the basement. If the ghost of the little girl has been seen regularly, then perhaps our medium could pick up more information underneath the house. <laughs> we had found the basement of the house, and we were eager to find out from our medium if there was any activity down here. Derek was determined to find the ghost of the hooded man. His emanations definitely, definitely have originated... Oh. Down here, because the, his energy, his residual energy, um, he would have done things. He would have been accustomed to things in this area down here. I just, you know, I, oh, it's like it's walloping me across my chest here with him. Um, I don't know anything, the history, anything about this building, but I swear that this robed figure should have been spotted, knowing his type of personality, on a number of occasions. And... I can't, really, I can't, not at the moment. And it's frustrating me. It, I can't get to the bottom. I'm trying to put the, the, the jigsaw, the pieces together psychically of what his role was here. I feel that he wasn't... A person, a human being. Was that you? Please no. tell me that was you. No, it wasn't. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Did I, you hear yeah, that? I heard more like a whisper. Yeah, it yes. was over to the right. I feel it like was like a. Just we walk through there. Should we listen? Yes. Should we listen? Okay. What do you feel, Craig? Well, so I feel exactly the same as I did when I was down here with Carl earlier. When we first came down here, my throat's all tight and constricted again. Uh, exactly the same place. When you were talking earlier, Derek, I, mean, I was get I got a real cold spot. I mean, yeah. it was it was I was absolutely freezing. Yes. And I'm not now. Is there any pipe work that could make that? You see, no. There's a there's a, there's a there's a sort of. Someone's with me now. Someone's got me my shoulders. Do you want Hold to... on, just a moment. Hold on. Step back, you. Step back. Leave me alone. Step back. Just held my shoulders and, and pulled my shoulders back and held it there for about three or four seconds. And he's here. He is here. He said, let's move out to the section here, Evie, because I feel he's, um, he's going to try and uh, do something here. Oh, I bent my shoulders back. Is this... <gasps> OK, he's still around here. He is still around here. He's actually playing with us. There's, um, there's got... Carl, yeah. a V, there's going to be a build-up here. Think... Should, we, should we leave now? No, we've got... It. That's we'll what we're back. here for. Yeah, we'll come back. With a build up happens. <laughs> Derek. 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 Phil, Phil, Derek. get Derek. old, get old, Derek. get up. Hey, Derek. Come on. Come on, Derek. 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 Come on. Derek, it's Phil. It's Phil. Hold on, Phil. Phil, Phil, Phil. Phil. Oh, okay, 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 we're okay, we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Take me away from here. Oh, Take, just move me over. Let's get me over there. Let's do this. I'm getting out there. Oh. Right. I've got my shoulders. Come out. Come out with us now. Come out with us, please. We were all alarmed at what we had just witnessed and were relieved when Derek made his exit. 
We decided it was best for the crew to split up into small groups, covering the house and the grounds. The majority of us went into the main part of the house in hopes of experiencing something paranormal. After a few hours, nothing had happened of any great significance. Maybe a seance was required in the blue room so that hopefully we could encourage something to happen. Meanwhile, Richard Felix had decided to venture into the grounds on his own, and Rick, Stewart and Craig had gone back underground to the basement. Should we go through to where there it was possessed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, okay, go on, you two leave the camera. Right, I, I can't see a bloody thing. Derek was standing right where Stuart is now when he got possessed. Where? Yeah. Where Stuart exactly is now. Exactly where Stuart is now. Um, so where you are I've, now, I've, I've, I've repeatedly had a feeling standing here um, of uh, being choked. Ever since I started doing the series, I've been wanting to pluck up the courage to go into somewhere on my own down into a tunnel or one of the rooms alone. And I must be honest, I still haven't plucked up the courage to do it. Um, this is the nearest I've come. I'm now in the grounds of the hall. And I think the nearest thing I can do is to actually wander through this yew tree tunnel alone, which I'm heading towards. I'm going through it. Uh, the interest that's been shown, I'd be totally surprised if we don't get some kind of reaction from them. Nice reaction, not a negative thing. It's kind of annoying as if it's almost, almost like, um, you know, central heating when it's on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is there any kind of motorised? I must pay for that noise. There's no motorised thing. I mean, there's obviously got to be something, mm. but... Is it a um, water system? It sounds like a water. Yeah, it might be water. Well, it wouldn't come to the point. Something just blew on the side of my... Is it? Is it? Yes, it did. <coughs> it was quite a little... I heard that. Was that something just dropping from the ceiling, or was that like a click? Just a click out in that corner. No, it was in the corner. Yeah, it was in that corner. If you don't want us here, just make some sort of a noise or do something to let us know you don't want us here and we'll leave. No, we won't leave. We'll stay here if we hear anything. No one knows that, I'm just saying that. It's pretty nasty down here. It's uh, <clears throat> really dank and dingy. I don't think I could come down here on my own at all. I don't think I'd last more than two minutes in all honesty. I actually feel I do actually feel quite comfortable in here, to be honest. I, I don't think there is anything my opinion is I don't think there is anything in here, but saying that, I do not think though I would spend any time down here alone. No, no, I think if you were down here, I think if you were down here on your own then I think obviously something may happen, but generally the place itself, I think it's quite freaky. Yeah. It's not a nasty feeling. I completely disagree with you. I've got the worst headache in between my eyes and do not like it at all. Would you spend time down here on your own? No, you no chance. I don't want to quite have it to leave now. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's a gap. Oh, it sounds like a little squeaky voice. No. Yeah. Shh. Yeah. yeah. Can you smell? Can you smell? What? Smell. Smell. What's it smell? It's almost like like a fragrance, like a like a sweet smell, like a almost like perfume. It's like mm -hmm. a sweet smell, like a almost like perfume. Can you not smell that? Please tell me someone can smell it. Over this way. Ooh. It smells like perfume to you. No, does perfume. it smell like perfume to you? To me, yeah, it's just it coming in here. It smells foul to me. That actually smells... F it smells rancid, does it? To it me. smells sweet. No, to me that smells rancid. 
Mm. What are you trying to say? <laughs> 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 you, but that, that smell, it's, it really, it's not it's very off-putting. Yeah. It's some, um, oh. Yeah. Oh. I'll sit in this corner for a bit, actually. Right now, I'd much rather see the ghost of the little girl than uh, the guy who was choking Derek or doing whatever possessed Derek. Then yeah, what, what happened nice. to Derek? He just started, he got gripped from the side and then he started kind of talking out the side and got all tight and so that was hard. Yeah. Oh, well, hopefully something like that will happen to us, don't I? Mm. We might end up getting choked or thrown about or pushed. Maybe. Hope it happens in all honesty. Personally, I'd rather I'd rather it happen to myself. So then I would be a firm... I'm not going to lie to you. I'd, I'd rather it happen to you as well. <laughs> I think that I would be a firm believer that there is something there. Well, I've heard things, I've felt things, you know, I've been pushed and that, but... You know, it's all explainable at the end of the day, but I mean, if we were actually to see a silhouette of some kind down here... That is something like that, wouldn't it? Mm. This tunnel is over a thousand years old and you've got the most incredible gnarled old yew trees in here. I hope nothing's behind me. <laughs> Not a problem. Now I'm walking down towards the cloisters. It's uh, just had a serious deja vu then. It's like I've been here before or I've dreamt it before. <laughs> no, Craig, stay. Well, leave us a camera then. What are you going for? What's wrong with you? I'm about to pass out. Alright, alright, give us a camera. Wait till I get out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Well. There was three of us, one down, two to go. My heart's racing. I feel f***ing <laughs> terrible, mate. Well done. How do you feel? I just got this overwhelming feeling of sickness and I, everything just went black and I was about to pass out. I just had to leave. Like, I, I still, my heart is racing. I feel like. Think <coughs> it's nerves? No, I don't think it is because it just suddenly came over me so fast. Just for the record, um, I've just left Rick on his own. I'm shaking. Without any form of light whatsoever, so I'm just going to go back in there now. You take that, and my legs are gone. I can't even walk. Can you do anything at all just to show us that you're here in the room with us? Anything at all? How do you feel, Phil? Fine. Nothing? No. How does... Um, I, I'm getting cold, but mm. maybe it's that's probably because I'm sitting still. Mm. Is anybody else feeling cold? No, I was just thinking that, except when you said that. It's, not, it's nothing extreme. Mm, just like a mm. breeze. It just feels like the temperature's dropping a bit. Oh, I am getting a breeze on my ear again. Are you? Yes, I okay. am. Okay. And the temperature for me is dropping quite rapidly. Okay. Do you feel cold, Carl? No. Phil? No. My hands feel cold. Mm. Just here. I'm sure there's one thing I do feel is absolutely shattered. You look shattered. Are you? I could, I could, mm. I, I, I was trying to actually think of an excuse to say to all of us, come and close our eyes and try and see if what we can do so I can go to sleep. If I close my eyes, I will go to sleep. Mm. Should we make a move? Yeah. Should we blow the candles out? It was now up to Richard Felix to hopefully come across something paranormal. He was on his own in the grounds, trying to conquer his fear. It's that dark door ahead that bothers me. What's through there? Oh, my God. 
is your worst nightmare. What's through the blackness? If there is anything, I'm out of here. My God. I don't know whether this can be seen on the camera, but I have two large shadows. Two. No, it's too much. I can't cope with this. No, I don't like it. Me. That's panic for you. Haven't broken the camera. Fell over. Didn't like it in there. Not that brave, are you? Um, going back to the house now, please. So this house that has stood alone and empty for years, that is supposed to be haunted, left its effect on some members of the crew, but not all. Derek believed he contacted a malevolent spirit, a hooded figure that has been seen regularly. We never did find out who this spirit once was or why he still haunts. Richard Felix thought he saw a dark figure in the grounds. Some strange noises were heard and a mysterious light shone at us through the woods. Aberglasney House certainly is an interesting place to investigate, but is it haunted? Ninety reported sightings of ghosts within the place, so I expected something to happen, and Derek came up with uh, some of them, um, certainly not ninety. During the walk around at night in the woods, when everybody saw the light, uh, we did actually get a bit carried away with what that could be. I prefer to put it down to maybe somebody actually in the woods or a car in the distance, maybe. Um, having said that, there has been sightings of a hooded figure there in that location, so who knows? Personally, I don't think it was anything to do with any paranormal activity. We were led to an area uh, of, like, cellars, so to speak. I was aware of this pulling down hard on my shoulders and with just I suppose a mental a mental energy said no I don't wish this and it poof, away from me thankfully he seemed to be taken over in the basement that was quite frightening um, bothered me a little bit during one of the vigils in the house Craig who went into the cellar um, complained of breathing difficulties he said he was being choked uh, this could be down to paranormal activities, but I think it's more likely down to the fact that the air down there was damp and you couldn't really breathe properly anyway. In the area where Derek had picked up the, uh, the figure that sat with people at the table, I thought I saw a figure. I'm sure it was my imagination, but that was it. I lost my bottle and turned and ran, fell over and felt a right prat. But I did say at the beginning, I thought we might see a ghost. And I might have done. I'm not sure. One of the first things that the group witnesses is the strange and mysterious light in the woods. Um, and though the light doesn't appear to move, so it suggests it's not somebody with a torch walking through the woods. But when they go and investigate, they find no source of the light. There's nothing there at all. So it's left a little bit unresolved. What we do see is shortly after that is that the, the group does start to experience things which they start to interpret now in terms of perhaps a paranormal explanation. So, for example, Yvette hears some strange breathing in her ear only to find out shortly after, or in fact when, when they start to edit the, the material, that it perhaps it seems to be sort of moth was flying in and out of her ear. But at the time, it's very worrying and it leads the group to think perhaps something unusual is happening. What are you going for? What's wrong with you? I'm about to pass out. All right, all right. Give us a give us a count. When we look at the uh, three lads down in the basement, Rick, Craig, and Stuart, um, again, it's a very nice example of how the crew seems to be becoming a little bit more sceptical and critical in their approach to investigations, which is a very good thing. Um, and what I'm talking about here is that even though we have Craig, who seems to be reporting feeling ill and, and headaches. Um, Stuart and Rick don't go along with that and say, yeah, well, I feel a bit odd here too. They have their own opinions and they're happy to voice them. So again, it suggests that they're not just going along with um, the sort of general opinion of the, of the people they're with. They're actually starting to stamp their own individual opinion. And I think that suggests or reflects that they are becoming a little bit more sceptical um, in their investigations. And I look forward to seeing more of that in, in future investigations. 
How do you feel? I just got this overwhelming feeling of sickness and I, everything just went black and I was about to pass out. I just had to leave. Well, that was certainly an interesting evening. 90 ghosts? I don't think so. Until the next time, sleep tight. Don't laugh at my bottom. Okay, I love you. Might try again another time. <laughs>